Good morning, gentlemen. I'm heading out of my neighborhood here, heading over to a house in a town where I live. We're going to do a little bit of work on an air handler. It is sitting in a very bad position for draining along with the pan. So we're going to try to fix that. So I'm going to take you guys along for the ride on this completely uninteresting call. This is our air handler, guys. See, the drain pan's kind of nasty anyway. Underneath it, we have a running P trap going downhill, but the air handler doesn't sit level. You see, actually, the drains go up on the secondary as you go down there. It's kind of a rough situation. I'm going to try to lift this thing up with Unistrat from these rafters. Maybe come at an angle so it doesn't block the service doors. So we'll see. That way I can kind of wrench them up and adjust them how I need to. You see, guys, back there in the back, I have the bolt driven into the wood where I'm going to thread the all thread rod. It's a little tight back there. I took the return off. But we're going to go to the front side, run Unistra underneath it, and kind of bring it up because it sags to the front here, or sags to the back here. So we're going to bring it up, see how much damage we can do, see if it'll even work. All right, guys, I have my rods here, two on the back, two on the front. I'm going to get some Unistrut and cut it, see how well I am at sliding it under, and hopefully be even able to kind of slide it up at an angle like this, and then bring it up on the front side to lift things up. So we're going to see a little bit of guesstimation. But <laughs> it's kind of tight. Here's my Unistrut. I'm going to slide it underneath the unit. On the back side back here, kind of leave it dangling like this. So when I bring up the front side, it will lift the unit up because it has to go up. I'll see how far I can go up because it's metal duct in the front of it. And I'm not taking everything apart and putting it back together. I just want to lift it up a little bit. I know it's sagged over the years, so hopefully we can bring it up an inch or two without destroying our ductwork. Guys, as you can see, we have our unit strut down there. You can see the hangers. It's a little bit hard to see. I'm going to pull them up from the other side, and hopefully that will give us enough room to lift this thing up a little bit. See them down there. It's tough. It's almost, it almost looks like that drain pan needs to be replaced. I don't know. I've sensed the strut up on the other side. The unit front to back is level in the center, so we're going to get it side to side to make sure it's level. Drain pan's got to go bye-bye. The good thing about it is I can take the center blocks out because the unit is hung and just slide another pan underneath it. It's really easy. So that works out really well. But I don't have my pan with me, so that part is not as good. If we look right here, guys, we have a little bit of water gathered right here. You run your finger through there. When you look at the bottom, you see a rust line down the bottom. There's a slit along this pan all the way through there where it's rusted out. But you can sort of guess. I mean, look at it. It looks like crap. So, it's a good thing we're up here today or we're flooded the ceiling again. There's what we're working for right there. Good old ream M coil. Don't mind hanging this thing up because we know those M coils never leak. Looks like also I need to get down there. The drain comes in right here. Comes in the bottom of the unit. We're gonna need to get down there and try to clear that drain out. It, I think it's actually passing water, but there's just a lot of junk out from in that coil there. You can see it. It's kind of great. Hey guys, it's your buddy Talon here again, heading to town to get that drain pan for our not so young rud unit up in the attic. Just thought I'd take a moment and let you know this segment's brought to you by Dollar General Trash Bags. Dollar General Trash Bags, the best trash bags you can buy at a store with the maximum amount of stuff cost five dollars. Dog Jones trash bags. Compare them to Hello guys. I'm in the joist space right next to the unit here. Crammed in like a sardine. If you see down here you can see, let's see the drains here. I'm gonna try to chop them down so there's a little bit less height because they come up awful high here because it's ruining how much space we have to run them. So, that's what I'm doing back here. It sucks. That's it. Hands in place, guys. I have it jumped up on a few pieces of strut with the S-lock binding them together. We are right there. I'm going to clamp the pan down to the platform here and here so it doesn't slide back and forth. And I can tie in the secondary drain on the back. Our secondary drain is tied in. Actually going downhill. Our primary down there. Tie our flex back on here. Before you look inside. Flex. 
kind of falls apart. It's already got a, you see down there, it's got a tear in it right there anyway. You see the flex over here also has a tear in it. So it's a real, it's a real junk heap here. But I'm going to, I can't, I don't have the stuff to repair it right now or replace it. So I'm going to hook this up just to test the unit and kind of notify him. And he'll probably actually replace these flexes. Someone added one here at some point. But this is that old jacket. Getting old, it starts crumbling and falling apart. Getting real real. So be very careful when we're reattaching. Anybody want to critique this fine flex hookup job? Go ahead. Come on. You may think it looks like shit, but it actually looks twice as bad as what you think it looks like. So there. All of our stuff is put back together. System's back online. I don't know how much better it looks, but at least it won't leak onto the ceiling. We're going to test out the system, how it runs in a few moments. We got it running in heat right now. I'm just trying to warm it up in here for when I put it in the AC in a minute. It's kind of cool today. It's mid-60s outside. But pretty much done here. Just making the best out of this thing. Hopefully it'll get a little bit more time out of it. All right, guys, we're walking around here. I had the system in heat. As you can see, we're almost up to 74 degrees. This house has, you know, this area, this area, spanning back. There's a stairwell down. We have our upstairs, and there's a bonus room that's not connected. That's also not zoned. So, of course, it never has enough air. Plus, we have a two-and-a-half-ton system with a lack of ductwork which basically makes it a ton and a half for two-ton system at best. So it would be better to actually put a two-ton system in here that's zoned. It would probably work pretty well. But I'm going to switch it over to HC, go down and check the charge and see how we're looking. Here's our old ream unit. Running like a champ, right? Here's our mana. Looking a little bit dirty. Trying to clean it off. Not today, though. Let's see our ream running like a champ, right? Oh, uh, shit. Nope. Running like a piece of shit. Six degree split. That ain't gonna cut it in the summertime in North Carolina. So we have to charge this thing back up. But it's probably the end of the line for this bad boy. Good thing we can reuse everything we just used upstairs on the new year. We're adding some refrigerant with the build piece wireless scale there. Glacier R22. Good old R22. Add about a pound, see where we're at. More than likely, I believe the accumulator's pretty busted up there on the bottom. I think I see some oil around there, so that's probably leaking. Maybe that, among other things. You know, we have a charge compensator, a dryer. All these things break down and start to rust and leak over time, so we'll have to see. But really should be at the end of the line for this bad boy. Turn that off. We'll see where we are after a minute. Here we are, guys, after about three pounds of refrigerant. Up there, 55 pounds. Here we're below the target. Both arenas, we finally have a little bit of sub cooling. It's bouncing around between, let's see, 0.5 and about 1. 15 degree split. Keeping in mind, our split's going to be higher because our airflow is so low. Airflow slows down, the air cools more as it crosses the coil. Just think about it because you're going slower across it, you have more chance to cool. The air is going to be colder. So I would expect our split to be real high, even though we're not doing a stellar job of cooling because our airflow, actual CFM, is low. But we look like we're getting closer to something we can live with for the time being. With a little bit more refrigerant. You see we're up to uh, 3.2 pounds or 3 pounds, 2 ounces. We'll continue to add until we get to around 4 probably somewhere in that arena. And then we'll be good for today until we discuss what happens with this machine. You see our sub cooling is coming up a little bit. So. Alright, we'll let it run for a few minutes and we'll finalize the charge. Just so you can see guys, I have my suction line being sensed from the common suction port I am putting in the refrigerant service valve taking my liquid pressure from the service valve my temperature probe for sub cooling is on the liquid line outside the unit I have this wad right here to sense outdoor temperature and I have a, another sensor here on the common suction line to get my superheat as you can see we have 26 degrees of superheat, 5 degrees of subcooling. There is a TXV upstairs. It may not be working all that great at this point because we have a higher than higher than normal superheat for a TXV. We're going to add a little bit more refrigerant to bring the subcooling up. 
and hopefully we get a little bit closer to these parameters. We're not gonna get right on the money because she's just not working quite right. But we're gonna get a little bit closer so people can be comfortable while they're waiting for a brand new unit. Here we are where it's gonna stay, guys. I'm 142 over 52.7. I have a 26 degree superheat and a nine degree subcooling. 16.9 uh, degree split. It's just, uh, it's not a perfect system at all. Superheat's too high for a TXV valve. Uh, doesn't look like the valve's letting up refrigerant through or the valve's gummed up or something along those lines, you never know. If the valve were to let more refrigerant through and bring the superheat down, the subcooling would also go down. So overall, the charge is still gonna be low. We just can't charge it to where it's supposed to be because the machine will not allow us to. But here we are. Beautiful flowers. The probe went dead right there. But, all right guys, well, that's about all for today. As you see, it's so low, there's zero pounds of pressure on it now. Good God. That's all for this one. Pretty soon we'll be putting this little basket out of the nosery.